Uh, greetings and kingdom blessings to all of you. Thank all of you that will be joining me this morning. This is Kevin Bailey in the great city of Indianapolis, Indiana. So thank you for tuning in today. If you would like to sow at the end of the broadcast, please go to touchofthemasterhmi.org. Uh, I don't own the rights to this music that is playing in the background. And also, uh, I like to thank all of my subscribers. God bless you. Uh, strength and grace be unto you. Uh, all, and all of uh, uh, the team and everyone that could be watching today. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for YouTube and all of my subscribers. Amen. Also, if you would like to purchase my book, you can purchase the book. Uh, at touchofthemasterhmi.org, Rediscovering Spiritual Warfare. It's also available at Amazon.com, uh, Target, Walmart, and Barnes and Nobles. Amen. If you would like uh, to purchase the book. Amen. Let me greet some of you before I go right into this. I'm going to go right into this. And uh, if this is too loud, let me cut this down. But it's time to check our hearts today. Amen. I talked to the team about this uh, this week. Um, and uh, it was interesting what we uncovered. But guess what? God dealt with me too. Amen. Amen. So as you are coming on, please like and share the video. Please share it as you are coming on. All right. Like and share the video. Uh, God bless you, Sister Abigail. God bless you, Providence Marina, and all of you that will be joining me. When I start teaching, if I don't say hello to you, uh, don't charge it to <laughs> uh, my, my heart. Charge it to my mind. Because when I start teaching, I'm not going to say hello. So come on in. Come on in. And uh, let the Holy Ghost come on. I ain't going to say come on in and bring your devils in. Uh, you know, uh, it's deliverance time. But it may be deliverance time for some of you. Amen. But it's time to uh, check our hearts today. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the matters of the heart. Amen. And by the grace of God, give you a scriptural reference uh, for those matters concerning the heart. Amen. And just like um, the heart is vital to the human body, just like the heart is vital to the human body to release blood all over the body and nutrients, so is your heart in spirituality. All right. It deals with the inner emotions, intentions, thoughts, and will. Amen. We're going to jump right into this. All right. As you're coming on, please share it. Even my, even my YouTube subscribers, subscribers, amen. Let me cut this down and we're going to go right in. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to post these. Good morning, uh, Sister Tina. God bless you, Providence Sonita. All right, as you're coming in, uh, thank you again for joining me. Amen. We're going to jump right into this. Y'all stay with me on today, okay? <laughs> yeah, and if you got to cough up, or, you know, just, just cough it on up. You know, some of us ain't even threw up in the bucket enough. Or a paper towel or whatever it is. But listen, even listen, even the times that we are facing, we're in a new year. Yeah, it's a pandemic. But guess what? It doesn't alleviate you from doing or excuse you from doing spiritual disciplines. And one of them being checking our hearts and making sure our heart is right. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these, your precious people. I speak strength and grace unto the, your people in Jesus' name. And I declare that your word is already anointed in Jesus' name and that you will bring deliverance, breakthrough in Jesus' name in the hearts and minds of your people in Jesus' name and even in their emotions. Bring deliverance in Jesus' name. And I give you praise for it now. And I release the authority of the blood over these, your precious people in Jesus' name, from the crown of the heads to the sole of their feet. And I bind Satan and all of his cohorts in Jesus' name that would try to block or hinder in Jesus' name the releasing of the word in truth. And we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, hey, Sister Tasha, God bless you. Sister Sandra, thank you. 
again for joining us to all of you for joining us. Amen. Let's talk about this matters of the heart. It's time to check our hearts today. People of God. Amen. It's time to check those hearts. Look, the heart, I just looked at this research. It beats about 100,000 times during the day. That's how vital it is. And it's up to a couple pounds uh, when we talk about the heart, the smallest things, but it's the most vital organ in the body. Amen. Just like your heart when walking with Christ is spirituality. It's the most Vital organ because the heart is the ruling center of the whole person and out of it springs all the desires and uh, and it's at the seat and will of the intellect and feelings and it's the center of spiritual activity. Amen. And our operations of the human life. Amen. Some said, well, Apostle, what are you talking about? What's in the heart? What's in the heart? Yes, and, and the Bible tells us to guard our hearts. In the book of Proverbs 4 and 23, guard our hearts. For out of the for out of the heart flows what? The issues of life. Amen? So what are these matters, apostle, that you're talking about? As I said earlier, the physical heart supplies blood to the body, while the spiritual heart nourishes the supplying of wisdom, Knowledge, understanding, and light to the human body. To, I mean, not to the human body, to the soul. To the body, mind, and spirit. Amen? Let's go look at some scriptures uh, real quick. In Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 7, and 21 and 22, and also Matthew 15, 18 through 20. Look at that. I'm going to read Mark's account, though. Mark's account. And actually, I'm going to start uh, in verse, uh, not 22, I'm going to start uh, in verse uh, 18. Let's start in verse 18. Mark chapter 7 in verse 18, and I'm going to read it through 22. Amen? Let's go. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's go. It says, are you thus without understanding also? Now, listen. Jesus is saying this. Jesus is talking to them about their hearts. Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach and it's eliminated thus purifying all foods. And he said, what comes out of a man that defiles a man for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye, blasphemy, cussing. You know, some got them old cussing demons too. Amen. Pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Amen. So listen, uh, have, have you ever talked to somebody and everything that they say is negative? Everything that they say to you uh, or it poses to be an attack or their words cut you and uh, hit you a lot of swear. I'm not talking about correction, but their words have a tendency to cut you or cut on you. Are y'all with me? We got to get our hearts right. Everything they say is negative. You know what? It's a heart problem. It's a heart problem. You know what? Some of them have an irregular heartbeat. <laughs> they have an irregular spiritual heartbeat. Are y'all listening to me? That means the heart, you know, it naturally the heart's racing real fast. It just races. It's irregular. Or some have a spiritual heart murmur. Are y'all there today? Y'all there? Hello? Do we do we worry about just our diets? Or what is or do we worry about what's in our hearts? Dietary laws in when Jesus was talking to them, dietary laws mean absolutely nothing. Jesus pointed out, listen, Jesus pointed out that sin 
actually begins. So I know this ain't popular. Yeah, we, we, we are welcoming. Many places are welcoming to sin. Compromise, uh, adultery, ignoring sin, turn our blind eye, blind eye to sin, greedy, covetousness. Y'all there on today? <laughs> Jesus pointed out that sin actually began in the attitudes, the intentions of the inner person. And Jesus said that they paved the way for sin. Those inner thoughts, the inner person, the intentions, some of us need to repent. And we're not pure impure because of what we have uh, eaten. It is outward acts, outward acts that make us impure. Are y'all listening to me? So an evil action begins, listen to me closely, with a single thought. Uh, allowing our minds to dwell on lust, envy, hatred, revenge. So we can't defile ourselves by focusing on evil. Amen. We have to follow Paul's advice in Philippians 4 and 8. It says, think about what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. What are our thoughts today? The devil doesn't know your thoughts. God knows your thoughts. What the devil does is deposit thoughts, and then you have a choice to act upon them. The devil makes suggestions to you. That's why we got to guard our hearts. That's why we got to pull those things down. Amen. He makes thoughts. Uh, some of us, uh, you know, maybe as some of the men and the women, we look upon a man and we think those adulterous uh, uh, adulterous. Thoughts or um, uh, perverse behaviors. Are y'all with me today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know how some of us see our favorite preachers and we, we say our favorite teachers and preachers and some are lusting through the internet. Uh, okay, let me let me leave it alone. Yeah, y'all stay with me. But there's a purity that must come to our hearts. Amen. What are the thoughts that we are thinking today or have been thinking? Are y'all with me today? The Bible says, Jesus said in the Beatitudes, Jesus said this. He said that the pure in Matthew 5 and 8, the pure in heart shall see God. The pure in heart shall see God. Psalms 119 and 10 says this. What's on your heart today? We have to check the matters of our hearts. Let's look at Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and 10. Let's look at it. Oh, man. You know what you are to do with your heart? I'm going to show you. This is what you should be doing with your heart. Are y'all there? <laughs> verse 10, Psalm 119, verse 10. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let not me wander from your commandments. With my whole heart, I have sought you. I defined on you earlier what could be in the heart, those attentions, those thoughts, those evil actions. The Bible says, with my whole heart, I have sought you, and let me not wander from your commandments, the word, the law. Because what does the law do? What does the law do? What does the commandments do? It teaches us right from wrong. Are y'all there? Let's go back over into the Gospels. Matthew chapter 6 and 21. So say, listen, many a times uh, we, listen, it, it's not, everything is not the devil. Those decisions and thoughts that we made open a door to demonic behavior. 
Some will say, oh, it's the devil. Yeah, the devil is the positive those thoughts, but everything is not a devil. Listen, you have to make a conscious decision to live right, to be pure before God. Our decisions many a times lead us to be bound in demonic activity. And those thoughts that are being deposited in our hearts that start here and then go down to the heart. And then it comes out of the mouth. I'm going to show you in just a second. Y'all stay with me. Matthew 6 and 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there is your heart will be also. And this is not just talking about your money. Whatever things that you value, do they take precedent over God in his heart? Are y'all there? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. A treasure is connected to value. What are the things that you value or things that you value more than God? We talked about guarding our hearts. Are y'all with me? Stay with me. Proverbs 23 and 26 says this. Let's go to Proverbs. Because see, these are matters of the heart. We need to check our hearts. What is burning on the inside of our hearts? Lust, perversion, iniquity, transgression. Some don't even know those things. Is it presumptuous sin? Premeditated sin? Oh, my. Hmm. Yeah. Some are premeditating sin and acted upon it. Listen, it's like a monster. Those evil thoughts, and many a times our senses, our eyes, our ears, our hands, those five senses, many a times they are hindrances to faith. Because we go by what we see here in touch. Uh-oh. Verse 26. Look what it says. It says uh, in, Matthew, in Proverbs 23 and 26, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes. Hello? Let your eyes, those eye gates, y'all see this? Now I got some help. But let your eyes, look what it says. Observe my ways. My son, give me your heart. My daughter, give me your heart. Yeah. And let your eyes observe my way. Amen. Psalm 51. Let's go to the book of Psalm again. Psalm 51. What kind of heart did God does God honor? Psalm 51. Many have prayed this prayer over and over again, and then we go back to the same mess. Amen. Come on. Y'all stay with me. Psalms 51 and 10. What type of heart does God honor? He says, look, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Verse 17 says this, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. God doesn't decide, despise the broken or contrite heart before me. Broken because of sin, not ashamed, not condemned. And listen, it's not enough to be sorry. We have to change the behavior. God's coming after those heart murmurs, irregular heartbeats today. What is your heart beating to? Is it beating to the things of God? Do you love him? Or are you steadfast in your spirit? Renew means to be changed. A transformation. Transformation. Be changed. Be transformed. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Be ever preserved. Are y'all with me? In your spirit. Within me. Because it starts within. You can't just be saved outwardly. Uh-oh. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to trouble some of you. Up. I, I may get, I may stir your demons. Uh, listen, Psalm 34, 18 says this. It says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, heart and save such as have a contri contrite spirit. That's Psalm 34 and 18. Psalm 37 and 4 says this. Y'all stay with me. Psalm 37 and 4 says this. Look what it says. Everybody say, we gotta, I got to get it together. We delight ourselves in the Lord, but look what he says. If you delight yourself, live for him, stay connected with him, he shall give you what? The desires of your heart. So your responsibility is to delight yourself in the Lord. If you want the desires of your heart. Y'all stay with me. We're going to get y'all going. Yes, Sister Sandra, Psalms 51, verse 10 and verse 17. I know I may be going too fast. Y'all stay with me. Psalm 26 says this. Have you even asked God today to examine your heart? Have you asked him to examine you, test you, prove you? Hmm. Let's go. Psalms 26 and 2. It says, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind. Try my mind. Test my mind. Try my mind and my heart. Are y'all there? Y'all quiet today. Okay. Amen. Let's go to Psalm 139. Some of y'all, y'all love this. Some of y'all love Psalm 139 until we get down to verse 23 and verse 24. Let's look at it. Psalm 139. Look what it says. And, and it says in here, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Huh? Some of us need to lay ourselves on the altar. Psalm 139, verse 23. It says, try me. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties or fears. And see if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me into the way of everlasting. Instructions for eternal life. Everlasting. Lead me. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Some of us need to ask the Lord to check our hearts today. We need to check those hearts in. You know, pride keeps us from checking those hearts. Pride, fear of what others think. Be insensitive, fear of rejection. Some of us are compromising, going along with people or things or sin because we're afraid of what they're going to think about us. Are y'all there? <laughs> you know, we got those friends that you know, we, we know they ain't saved, but when we go around them, we compromise. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, we, we tell them it's okay, but every other cuss word, every other minute or every other second is a cuss word, it's negativity. You know, they uh, sm uh, smoke a cigarette, smoke weed, get out. I'm not saying you can't. Look, Jesus hung around them, but he didn't do. He hung around the tax collector, the drunkard, the gluttons, but guess what? He didn't do what they did. Some of us need to say no more compromise. It's time to check our hearts today. It's time to check our mind and heart and soul and spirit. Amen. Are y'all there today? Luke's account. I love Luke's account. Luke's account says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We talked about value and everything connected with that. I just read Luke's account. No more. No more compromise. 
Amen. Who can know the heart? The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Let me read this to you. Who can know the heart? Who can know it? Oh, my God. Who can know the heart? Because, look, it can be wicked and deceitful. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. God searches the heart. He tests the heart. But there is a fruit that comes with what you do. Uh-oh. I know. I lost some of you. Some of you are struggling with that now. Some of you are struggling now. There is a fruit for your doings. Yeah, the easy thing to do is to blame it all on the devil. But guess what? You have free will. Are y'all there? <laughs> the greatest gift that he has given you is free will. You have a choice. We got to get our hearts right before the Lord. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs 21 and 2. Oh, man. <sighs> do, we, do we think? What we're doing is right. Do we think what we're doing is right? Look what it says in Proverbs 21 and 2. Look what it says. Every well man is right in his own eyes. Do you think what you're doing is right? It's right. The Bible says in your own eyes, not in line with God. Proverbs 21 and verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Just say, ouch. Everybody say, ouch. <laughs> ouch. Amen. Does God, does God go by outer appearance? Does he go? Let's look at first Samuel 16 and seven. Um, is, or your possession, your degrees, your status in life. Are they enough? Is that what God goes by? Does that have any merit to your salvation? See, look, when you come to Christ, listen, I've got bad news, but good news today. When you come to Christ, there's a standard of living. There must be a transformation and there must be a change in heart. Uh-oh. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. Look what it says. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature. Look what it says. Because I have refused him. So God doesn't look at your physical stature, your prominence, your degrees, your status in life, rich, poor. Hello. I know some of you, I'm stirring some of your devils up. There's a standard of liberty that comes with God. We have to live right. There must be a change of heart. The Bible says here in 1 Samuel 16 and 7 that I do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because no matter how tall, dark, and handsome, no, no matter if she got hips and thighs and beautiful Yeah, some of you, that's what you have married or in, well, the, the, that's what you want to connect with instead of the heart of the person. You know, those breast legs and thighs, tall, dark, and handsome, broad shoulders. <laughs> but you forgot to look at the heart. You forgot to test the heart. Oh, my. It's not what a man eats or thinks or does. Or what he even takes in is what comes out of the mouth. Y'all stay with me. He says in verse 7, 1 Samuel verse 7, For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For a man looks at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Y'all stay with me. Hello. 
Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36. Some of us have heart hardness. Amen. Some of us have stony hearts. Before the Lord, this is hard heartedness. We're bitter, stubborn. Uh, uh oh. Let's look at Ezekiel. Let's look at Ezekiel 36. Let's go to the major prophets. Ezekiel 36. When you're over there, just say amen. Ezekiel 36. Mm hmm. Look what he says in verse 25. Let's look at, well, he's dealing with them about idolatry and their worship to other gods and idols. And he says he's going to sprinkle water on them and cleanse them from filthiness. Let's read it. In verse uh, 25, it says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be cleansed. Clean, and I will cleanse you from all the filthiness, from all your idols, all the stuff. You know, some of us, uh, we worship things within the world, not just leaders, not just uh, uh, things, but possessions, material possessions. It's nothing wrong with pr prosperity. What's wrong is when they become your gods. Hello? Or is it that man or woman that you have met, they become your gods? You can't pray no more. You can't worship. You can't read scripture no more. Because somebody else is in there. Y'all there? You put them in the place of God. Uh-oh. Look what it says. Verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of the flesh and give you a heart of flesh. This is a heart of flesh. When it talks about a heart of flesh, this is talking about having a, a yieldedness, a, a honor, a respect towards God. Remember him in your heart. Give him your heart, your ways, a yieldedness, yielding to God. I know that's hard for some of us. Y'all go to the Strong's and look up 3820. It's several scriptures about the heart in there. Amen. Let's look at Mark uh, chapter. Um, let's look at Mark uh, chapter. Mark chapter 13. Y'all stay with me. We're going to wrap it up and I'm going to pray. Amen. Mark chapter 13. I believe. Yeah. Mark chapter 13. Let's look at it. Going back into the Gospels, Mark chapter 13. And we're going to look at verse 14. Mark chapter 13 and verse 14, I believe. I hope I wrote that down right. Sometimes I'll be all over. Um, 13. No, that's not the right. Uh, No, that's not the right. Okay. Yeah, let me scratch that. I don't know why I wrote that. That was for something else. All right, y'all stay with me. But listen, it's time for a heart check. All right, let me scratch that off. But it's time for a heart check. It's time to check our hearts in with God today. It's time to check them. What is it that is in your heart that's keeping you from serving God fully. Is the loneliness or despair? Is it because, you know, we just want a companion? And it's okay to have a companion, desire companionship. What, what is it that is keeping you from God? What iniquity? Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 6 and 17 says this, but God be thanked and through that through you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the what? Heart. That form of doctrine to which you were delivered. That's in Romans 6 and 17. The doctrine connected with Christ is what brought the deliverance. Are y'all there? Some are probably struggling. Paul begins to fight even this law, 
in his members, in his flesh, he begins to fight. Like some of us, you know what? Because we have a heart issue, we haven't checked our heart in uh, uh, with God, and there's an altar uh, in our hearts connected with other things. That is, and what comes out of heart is evil, lewdness, lying. We read it earlier. But look what happened to Paul in uh, Romans chapter seven and fifteen. Listen, it says this: For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will do, this is started in Romans chapter 7 and verse 15. I do not understand for what I will to do that I do not practice, but what I hate that I do. If, if, it then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. Because the law teaches us what? Right and wrong. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For we know that, it is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do I do not, but the evil I will not do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Verse 21, so that's, uh, jo that's Romans chapter uh, uh, 7, Romans chapter 7, 15 through 21. And he says, I find then a law that evil is present within me, the one who wills to do good. All right. So it's present within us, but we have to make a choice. We have to will to do good. We have to will to live right. These are matters of the heart. Matthew, last scripture, Matthew chapter 15. It's, a, it's his account. Amen. Matthew chapter 15. Now, I'm going to read this uh, in verse 8 and 9, and then, and then I'll challenge y'all to read 18 through 20. But look at this. See, see listen. We, we can't be as hypocrites. We can't play act anymore. Uh, some of us need to pull the mask off. I know some of you are having to wear a mask because it's a pandemic, but some of you have spiritual masks on, and you need to pull them off. And say, God is me. And be naked before the God. I, before God. I agree with you. I agree with you. Lord, check my heart on today. If it's anything that's not of you, Lord, purge it out of my heart. Lord, I'm sorry for those thoughts. Yeah, come. are y'all with me? Matthew 15, verse 8. Look what it says. These people draw near to me with their mouth, lip service only, lip service only, and honor me with their lips. So some of you that are worshiping or able to, you lift your hands, you're worshiping God, you know, so praise God, hallelujah, all, you said all this stuff. But listen, he calls it, uh, Isaiah prophesies about this in verse 7. He says, hypocrites, well, did Isaiah prophesy this about you? saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth. This is in Matthew 15 and verse 8. And honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctors of men. So listen, yeah, so I'm going to stir some of the religious devils up now. Yeah, because some of us are teaching junk and mess uh, are y'all listening to me? That's not even scriptural, and they are considered commandments of men. But whenever there's hypocr hypocrisy within a house, wherever you are, look, this is what will manifest. Teaching as commandments of men, doctrines of men. These are uh, doctrine is connected with a process of arriving at a truth. And some believe that it's a truth. But hypocrisy means play acting. A pretender. Give him your heart today and stop play acting. Stop pretending. Become a contender for the faith. Catch fire for Jesus. Remember what he did for you. He shed his blood for you. Can you at least give him his heart? He bore that cross for you. The place of shame and degradation. Hello? The place of dishonor, being spit on. Are y'all listening to me? Clothes being gambled for prior to him uh, 
taking that cross up the hill of Golgotha, the weight of the sin of the world to you, for you, the weight of the sin, to get that victory back for us, to get that reconciliation back into the Father. God, help us on today. God, check our hearts today. Let's check our hearts today. Check your heart in with God on today. It's over. Either what he did for you is a reality and it's real, or it's not. It's either real or it's not. You can no longer worship him in vain, only with your mouth and lips. You know, you say all the cliches, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But there's no evidence that you have rendered your heart of that has changed towards God. Let us pray. I'm going to pray. I challenge y'all to read 18 through 20. Amen. I challenge y'all to read that. Well, let me go ahead and read it real quick. Look, verse 18, it says, but those things that receive which out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, or lies, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed, unwashed hands does not defile a man. You know what they want to do to religious devils? They want to stay with religious ordinances and religious uh, behavior instead of letting God deal with their hearts, thinking that their outward acts will be enough. Our acts are not. You are saved by grace through faith, not your acts. But because there is a change in heart, uh, listen, your heart must be purged and it must be a lifestyle. Y'all there? Let me pray. Let me pray. God wants to deal with the hearts of men. No matter what title you carry or what you have, man or woman of God. And some of you that are not saved, God is after your heart today. Yeah, he's after your heart. Some are bound by demons and of course need deliverance and healing. But he's after your heart on today. Saved or unsaved, he's after your heart. When you come to him, there must be a change and transformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Let's pray. And some of us need to renounce and repent. I'm just going to say, repeat this after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I fall out of agreement with every evil word that is proceeded out of my heart that came out of my mouth. That is the thing that defiles me. And I ask you to cleanse me. And I ask you to loose and deliver me as I renounce the evil thoughts, the murders in my heart, adulteries, fornications, thefts, lies, cussing, blasphemy. All these things defile me. I fall out of agreement with them. I renounce them. And I ask you, Lord, to heal my heart and to deliver me. From selfish ambition, self-centeredness, pride, stubbornness. Say, deliver me from those things as I've renounced them in Jesus' name. And say, Lord, I give you my heart. Say, I give you my heart on today. And I give you permission to purge it. Yes, to restore it. And to deal with the spiritual in a regular heartbeat. And say, Lord, release your heartbeat into mine. Say, I receive the heartbeat of God. And I fall out of agreement with any sin, any shortcoming, and any thoughts. And I give you praise now for it. And I ask you. To heal and deliver me. Set me free. 
as I acknowledge that this is sin. And I thank you for the seed of the word and that you have sprinkled me with clean water and that you have cleansed me from all filthiness. And say, Lord, I give the stony heart and hard heart to you. And I forgive all those who have hurt me in Jesus' name. And I receive the breakthrough. I receive the deliverance. Thank you for what you revealed on me. To, uh, what you revealed to me on today concerning the heart and the matters of the heart. I check my heart in to you and with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, praise God. Well, thank all of you for joining me today. God bless all of you. Amen. I'm sorry, my banner, <laughs> yeah, it looks backwards. You got an iPhone, turn it around. Amen. God bless you, though, and thank you for joining me. If you would like to sow, Amen. Please go to touchofthemasterhmi.org if you would like to sow. We certainly appreciate that. And thank you to all of you that have sold it to us. Uh, you should have received a letter uh, from last year to thank you and also uh, to let you know what we did with your donations. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you to all of my YouTubers and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you for all of your support as well. We appreciate you. God bless all of you. And I pray that God dealt with your heart on today. Amen? Amen. Uh, if you would like uh, to receive, we are back to work now, so if you would like to set an appointment uh, to receive spiritual assessment or deliverance, please email us at info at touchofthemasterhmi.org and our administrators will give you directions and how to set the appointment. All right? Okay. Thank you all again uh, for joining me uh, once again. All right, this is Kevin Bailey in the great city of Indianapolis. God bless all of you.